Nashville, Music City. Our time here's tight, so we gotta make it quick. My man on the ground is Ben Swank, the Nashville musical kingpin and Jack White's right-hand man at Third Man Records. I just called him and he sent me straight to Phil Coffin's house, AKA The Mangler. He's a Nashville celebrity and probably the most infamous roadie ever for many reasons, but none more so than for stealing Graham Parsons' body and burning it. I've heard he's an amazing character and an unmatched storyteller, but he'll eat you for breakfast if he doesn't like the look of you. So I've got my best pants on. <laughs> Phil Kaufman, I presume? Hey, man. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Good to see you, man. Good to see Good you. Good to see you. Tim Harry. Can you go inside? Sure. Uh, this is the Casa de Mangler. I, all my memorabilia is on the wall and in my mind. Over here, there's the, uh, the Wall of Shame with uh, Steve Earle and Emmy Lou, Graham Parsons. I love this picture. Oh, this one here. The, that's that's like, early rock and roll. The money, cocaine, hashish, and a gun. And off to work. That's all you need. He's not off to the office. Off to the office, yeah. That's I celebrated... Three quarters of a century and no progress last year. I'm 76 <laughs> nice. this year and still at it. Still riding motorcycles, scuba diving, and chasing younger women, you know, 65, 70. Yeah, you know, the, young, the, young, the, young, oh, the young, young, the young, the young kids, the young girls, yeah. <laughs> How did you get started? When I, when, I, when I got out of prison, I was a marijuana felon in the 60s. So uh, a buddy called me up and said Mick Jagger and uh, Marianne Faithful were coming to Na LA. And uh, they need somebody to drive them around. Somebody knew the area, so the guy bought me a pair of shoes. And it was time to go to the uh, studio. They were mixing uh, Beggar's Banquet, and I got uh, to the studio, and they, they they said, "Who's there?" And I said, "Rolling Stones." I said, "They're not here." I said, "Yeah, they're here." I hear the guy in the back says, "They're not only here; they're on the right day. They're on time." <laughs> and I said, "They're going to be on time every day." So we I drove them back to their to their house, their brand new '68 uh, Cadillac convertible. And Mix, how are you getting home? I said, I'm going to have to walk. I don't, you know, I didn't have any money. Mm. And Mix, Mix said, oh, shit. He took $1,500. He all the money he had in his pocket, handed it to me, gave me the keys to the car and said, see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And that was Probably my first day. Than that like was my first day movies. in the music business. You know, all of a sudden, you know, I said, this is pretty good. Then Graham Parsons came in about a week later. Graham asked me if I'd work for the, work for the Flying Breeder Brothers touring. And I said, uh, road, what does a road manager do? He said, well, it's the same thing you did for the Stones in the house. You just take it on the road. I said, oh, shit, I can do that. But I like talking about Graham. Well, I, I, I met Graham, uh, as I said, through the Flying Beauty Brothers. And uh, we went to a funeral for Clarence White, who was the guitar player for the Birds. And Graham and, and everybody there were saying that, you know, if Clarence had his choice, he, that would not have been his choice of funeral. It would have been a little bit more subtle. So uh, Graham, Graham and I had a, had a few sherbets. And... Uh, we he said, look, if I die first, I want you to take my body out to the desert and burn it. I said, me too. Is it a deal? And we shook on it. Of course, the asshole died several months later, and I'm sitting around the house playing shoulda. I should have been with him. I shouldn't have let him do this. I should have. So anyway, my girlfriend says, you know, get off your ass and do it. So I did. I borrowed a hearse from, from a friend, went out to LAX, and convinced them that uh, the family wanted the body flown out to New Orleans. And so you just took him out to Joshua Tree? Took him out to Joshua Tree and opened up the casket. And we used to play this game. What do you got something on your shirt? Burp. That, that, that was the last thing he got from me. And then I put the gas on him and uh, said, see you around, pal. And lit a match and threw it in. Oof. It's a big, big flame ball of oxygen as, as, the, as the gasoline ignited. And I could see his ashes going up into the desert. I said, my job's done here. And then I, we left. and. Uh, a couple of days later, the police arrested me for uh, Grand Theft Parsons. <laughs> <laughs> and you did, you produced, uh, you produced Manson's record. Uh, Is yeah. Sure worked on it? Yeah, Charlie, Charlie Manson. I, I, like I got, the, the, the I've got the original copies the inside. Oh yeah? Yeah, I'll show you, yeah. I heard him singing in the prison yard. He sounded kind of like a young Frankie Lane. So when I got, I stayed with Charlie and, and the family for a while. I have had, I've had, Sex with more murderers than anybody in show business, <laughs> but, but then that's Charlie that's got long. Charlie got a little crazy, and I said I I, I got to go, and he said you can't stay here, you're too smart. 
<laughs> he's like, you got to be the smartest. Yeah, you can't be smart hanging out with Charlie. You know, Charlie, Charlie does the thinking. Here's something, uh, the original, the original Charles Manson album. We, had, we only did 300 of them, but it's, but it's been bootlegged for quite a few years now. He gave me the uh, rights to his music, and, and this, 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 this taken from quarter-inch tape. It's, it's not a very good mix, but it's, but it's the original one. He, he used to call me occasionally, and the last time he called me, he was rambling on and on, and I said, Charlie, the difference between you and I is that you're doing life and I'm living it. He said, you think that's funny? I said, it's fucking hysterical. Don't call me again. And I hung up on him. I haven't heard from him since. Yeah. <laughs> Hope um, I haven't offended him. <laughs> 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 Those murderers are so, you know, they're so touchy. Did you all, was part of your job ever involved scoring tail for the bands or where they got that covered on their own? If somebody sees somebody like the you know, girl would wave at him, I'd just give her a backstage pass and then bring her back. Yeah. Like Sweet Connie. You ever heard of Sweet Connie? She, uh, Connie was a school teacher in, in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and the, she used to come out and, can I say blowjob? You can say blowjob, you can she, say suck cock. She, 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 she would come, she'd come out and service the band and do, then do their laundry. And then you know, they, when they come to her town, and then some of them would fly her out there and she'd do the same thing. And, and uh, I've seen the top of her head. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but, but she, she, uh, she's notorious. I mean, everybody knows Sweet Connie. Yeah. I want to know Sweet Connie. Yeah, it's, she's in the book. There's the pictures in my book. My job is to get them to work as gracefully as possible, plug them in and get out of their way. I don't like the them and us attitude. Some, some musicians say, the roadies are them, and then there's, the musicians are us. We're all together. These guys aren't plugging in, you ain't shit. You're a lifer. I'm a lifer, yeah. yeah. It's a, and you work with but it's show business. God, I love it. <laughs> Good old Mangler. He was just getting started on his stories about Zappa, Morrison, and Joe Cocker. But I had to go to meet my Nashville guy, Ben. What is this place? All right, this is our record store where we sell all of our third man wares. So. The idea is like the old like Sun Records or Fortune Records, something like that, where you record the records in the back and then sell them in the front. So we only sell third man stuff. All of our miscellany t-shirts and 45 middles, all kinds of random novelty and junk. The dude that sells black lacquer in town is psyched. <laughs> He's psyched. <laughs> we do a lot of shows in the back too. We had like a few of Jack's bands played, obviously. Uh, all the bands on the label play here. All right, so this is, this is a live, the live room holds about 300 people. So yeah, this is what we do, photo shoots, video shoots back here. As far as we know, it's the only venue where you can record straight to analog tape. Straight to analog tape. Jack produces and mixes all of the live albums himself, so he's like really hands-on with all of it. That's cool. Yeah. For me, I'm really into whale watching. Right. You lay down naked. <laughs> And you look down and you try and give yourself a boner without touching <laughs> and it kind of like flops around like a whale, you know, and you can look down and be like, whoa, she breached. <laughs> I've never done that. Bye, me. Oh, oh see, that's weird. That's just, I'm just, we just met. You know, I'm sensitive. Uh-huh. I understand. <laughs> oh, man. I always get a little too friendly and mess things up. That doesn't seem too mad, though. He said he's going to take me to Glenn Danzig's house. It's like a house party place where these dudes put on shows in their house. And I was like, yes. I hope while these guys set up the show, I can work on my new Nashville-inspired four-part electronic opus. Sort of. It comes and goes. I usually run the door and run the sound and make sure bands are going on time. Oh, yeah. What's happening tonight? Let's um, talk about the lineup. Having a show with Big Sur, Cy Barkley and the Way Outsiders, and Nashville Child. Nashville Child are like local lords. Yeah. Which 
member of Natural Child are you? I'm Wes. What do you do? I play bass and sing. I'm Zach. What do you do? I play drums. Piss McMurray. What do you do? Uh, <laughs> I'd be uh, turned around at interviews. Watch out, it's hitting your shoes. It's all right, I got boots on. You guys are road dogs. Yeah. yeah. Where, you guys, where are you guys from? Nashville, Nashville Tennessee. Tennessee. Right here? Yeah. Right here. What do you guys travel when you're on tour? A mini van, right there. Mini V? Oh, I mean, yeah. But don't show it because we don't want. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Nope. How long are you on the road for when you're on tour? Long stints, little short runs. Never Maybe more than like. Never more than like two or three. Days. Yeah. Oh, that's. Uh, I thought you said you guys were road dogs. Well, we are, but no, that's good. See, listen. If you tour too much. Lap dogs. I thought you guys felt like a big old Turner and Hooch dog, but now I'm like. If you tour for like a month like straight, you lose your, your shit running, and you, you know? like you get sick. <laughs> Everybody gets sick at least once on tour. It's terrible. You roll into the club, what's the vibe? What vibe do you want when you're like, this is gonna be good? Everybody handing us weed. Yeah, people and, like and, uh, smoking uh, chocolate in the bar. All right. Let's hear it for the natural sea. No, okay. Let's wrap it up. What have I learned in Nashville? One, I want Mangler to be my dad. Two, I want to live in Third Man Records. Three, I want to hang out at Glenn Danzig's house every night for the rest of my life. So there's only three cities left to hit, and one of them is on the other side of the country. Time to see if my road dog tendencies are still in Tizak.